What up dude bros, I'm Frank. This is a group review of a few Air Warriors blasters. Three products in this video. First, the Tactical Storm. This is a spring action magazine fed blaster, kind of comparable to the Retaliator. Next, the Monorail Blaster, which is a spring action shotgun styled blaster, or at least in appearance, it only fires one at a time, but it has a really interesting inline magazine system. As well as the very small Jaguar, which is a little spring action top primed uh, clip fed blaster with a built-in clip that's not detachable. Also new and included with each of these blasters are the Long Distance Darts by Air Warriors. So let's get into the unboxings. Included is the blaster itself, two magazines, the barrel detached, and a few darts. Included is the blaster itself and a few darts. Included is the blaster itself and a few darts. Now to the externals and the function of each of the blasters, starting with the Tactical Storm. Up front you have this wicked long barrel. It's a pretty basic design and it actually unscrews so you can take it off like that. Whether it's for storage because you, you dented this or you just don't like the look of it or whatever, um, it's nice that it unscrews. Moving back, this is a magazine fed blaster. The magazine well is right here. This is compatible with Nerf and Strike magazines. To get it out, just like other Air Warriors blasters, you pull back the priming handle, then you hit the ambidextrous magazine release right here and just pull. The included magazines, which are gray, hold 10 darts each. But again, you can use in Strike Nerf magazines with this blaster as well as the Nerf darts. Moving back a bit, this is the priming handle up here. It's a spring powered blaster. That's how you prime it. And given it's relatively high velocity, I'd actually say it's a little lighter than you might expect. The smoothness and everything functions pretty well, but I'd kind of expect more weight considering it shoots over 80 FPS. But it works just like all the other ones. This blaster does not have slam fire. Down to the trigger, pretty basic trigger. Again, without slam fire, it works like any other Springer. The grip is better than a lot of other Air Warriors blasters, but since they're worse than the Rebel blasters, that's not really saying much. It's pretty skinny, but it's it, it'll do. I whine about grips all the time, but this one is better than others. I don't need to be negative, but I'm not being positive. So it it's just a grip. Boom, done. Now I feel like everybody else who just says, here's the blaster, and they don't actually review anything. <laughs> then moving back to the stock area, it's a really short stock, um, like not really functional, but it's also removable, which is kind of odd because it's already so stubby. When you remove it, you save like a total of, I don't know, two inches, but that is removable. It's not a retractable stock or anything. It's just on off. So you can pull it off if you're trying to, I don't know, go full pistol mode. So when you take off the barrel and the stock, you shorten it up. So that's why I kind of think of this similar to the Retaliator. Not quite as modular because you can't put anything else on the stock or the front barrel. But it has tactical in the name. That's the Tactical Storm. So good thing it has removable stuff because tactics. And you kind of feel like a badass when you thread anything on. So those are the basic externals. Did you notice a lack of anything? Considering it says tactical in the name, it doesn't seem very tactical when it doesn't have any freaking rails. And with this giant long barrel, it's kind of like the sniper-esque feel. So wh where's the scope rail, bro? Just like the Raptor Strike. Like, what's happening? What's happening? I need my tactics, bros. Especially since the monorail has a, a rail up here. I mean, called the monorail, it'd be kind of funny without a rail. But a sawed-off shotgun has a, has a tack rail, and the sniper gun with tactical in the name doesn't. I don't get it. But that's the overview of the Tactical Storm. Next, the overview of the monorail blaster. This is really interesting, and I nerded out with the, the actual designer of this at the New York Toy Fair a few months ago. It's a really innovative loading system that I haven't seen in a blaster before. Unfortunately, it doesn't work exceptionally well. Holding it and using it, I can see how it works, but it's difficult to capture it on video. So makeshift graphics will have to do. But it's an inline magazine system, so there's a bunch of darts in a line. It holds five in the internal magazine. And to load, you unlatch the little orange lever back here, and then you push in the darts through the rear port. Then when you prime the blaster, you're pulling back on a little track with little notches that kind of scan over the darts on one way, and then they catch them on the way back. And when you push the priming handle forward, you then pull the darts forward and one drops into the firing chamber up front. Pretty interesting stuff and again the magazine holds five darts and if you have a jam, which I had a number of them, you have a, a jam door up here. So you can open that up and kind of clear out the jam. I had quite a few jams even using brand new darts. As cool as the mechanical design of this is, I think it's more of like a Nerf homemade blaster where the user has to be kind of careful with it and delicate and understand the mechanics of it so they can run it properly. It's not quite as dummy proof as a lot of other blaster designs where you can hand a tactical storm or a retaliator to just about anybody and they can't really do anything wrong with it. This blaster because of how both the notching system and the, the chamber feeding system kind of rely on gravity if you're if you're priming it quickly off axis without gravity working how it should or if you just misuse it in little minor ways without the experience to know how to use it properly. So it works but I'd say more in like testing conditions rather than battle conditions. More on the overview there is a top rail up here this is not an in-strike tactical rail though but it does have a rear sight that aligns with the front sight that's adjustable like that. 
I don't think it'd be useful to like align elevation or anything, but if you want to slide it completely off in order to slide something else on there, that's kind of the only use I can see for that. Up front, no attachment point or anything of interest other than the access door, which I already pointed out, which if you buy one of these, it's really fun to use, but you're going to have to get really used to clearing out jams. So I've gotten kind of quick at clearing it out with one hand. To the pump grip, it's a comfortable pump grip. The prime weight is nice and smooth. And since you're not only priming the blaster, you're also using the conveyor belt. It kind of like jams up on you if you use weird darts. Mention that because a note, I'm going to complain about these new um, long distance starts in a moment. Then moving back to the grip, I don't think the shape is optimal for like the, the, the middle finger comfort riding up into this little slot, but it's comfortable enough. But it's not cramped and small, it's just kind of oddly shaped up in here. And the trigger pull is like a normal spring trigger pull. Surprisingly, no sling mounts, which would seem appropriate for a shotgun, but maybe that's just me. That's the overview of the monorail blaster. Next up is the Jaguar. This blaster is not new. It's a recolored uh, blaster that's now being released with the long distance darts, kind of like a reskin or an update. Everything's adult reskin but this is just a color reskin. But this one's spring powered. You prime it with a gray handle up here like that and it loads from the, the clip up front. This is in fact a clip, not a magazine. I'm not incorrect there. And the clip holds six darts, but it's not a removable clip. You can't pull it out of the blaster. It's built in. In that sense, you, you kind of think of it like a front cylinder. With a cylinder fed blaster, you can always load and just keep firing. With this one, after you fire your last dart, you have to hand load and then manually reset it to the bottom. And that's just another step that's not really necessary compared to a revolver with a built in cylinder that's just continuous. But the overall frame is pretty simple. It has another small grip, but because it's such a little blaster, I wouldn't complain about that one too much, and a normal trigger pull. Everything's pretty much exactly as you would expect it to be by looking at it. But that is the Jaguar overview. Next up, the long distance darts, which are new darts by Air Warriors. They did a bunch of nerding out and testing, and these are just hitting the market along with their precise pro darts, and these are going to replace all of the other Air Warriors suction cup darts, or at least be an additional option instead of the su suction cup ones. I've done a little bit of testing. I haven't done my full testing, so I don't want to give a firm opinion on these uh, darts, but they're just as inaccurate as elite darts right now, as far as I can tell. So they're kind of like a, a bummer, like I don't really like them. And as far as the long distance aspect goes, I haven't done official range testing again, so I don't want to give a firm opinion, but from what I've tested just outside, there was wind and other factors that I couldn't control. That's why it's not a firm opinion, but they weren't getting any better ranges than other like elite darts or anything else. So I'm not really sure why you would be inclined to buy these darts. Furthermore, the assembly of these darts seems really sloppy and Kush Gen 2 darts, I think, had this issue where they had a bunch of glue all over around the head. And when you front load it like into the Jaguar, it's really not a big deal because the glue doesn't touch anything. It's just no big deal. But when you run it through, especially the monorail blaster or any magazine fed blaster where the barrel is chambering over top of it, this excess glue that's just kind of all around there like causes drag. And that's a huge issue with the jamming with the monorail blaster. Now this blaster feeds much better with the other darts. It doesn't feed perfectly. So it's not completely the darts fault. It's just a challenging mechanical design, but it was causing jams with the tactical storm. And it wasn't the blaster again when it fired elite darts, when it fired the precise pro darts in the old Air Warrior darts, it fed just fine. But these things, because of this glue, it, it jammed up. So that just seems like sloppy manufacturing to me, and it's kind of a bummer. So it doesn't have better accuracy or long range from what I could tell, and it also causes a whole bunch of jams. So I don't see any reason at all to use these like at all. But on a less negative note, the precise pro darts also by Air Warriors are awesome and they really actually are precise, which is a surprise because it's not just a marketing thing where they're like, this is super lead accuracy and it's not at all like the long range barrel. This is, these are actually accurate. So I'm really not sure why they have both of these. I think all of the, the blasters should have come with these ones because they're really like solid darts. But again, all of these blasters are compatible with Nerf Elite darts. So if you don't want these and you don't like these long distance darts, but you like the blasters, you can use Elite darts or more importantly, third party options like the Valentine or the Waffle Tip or AccuStrike darts in these blasters. So that is the ammo explanation. Now to the firing demo, Lego. Starting off firing the Tactical Storm using the included blue Busby darts and we're shooting at my blaster board's uh, target setup. Now some Nerf Elite darts out of the InStrike magazine, because it works. <laughs> it was like a meter off at 20 feet range. <laughs> oh, and then I get a bullseye. What the F is that? That doesn't even make sense. <laughs>
just to prove that this blaster doesn't suck, it's just that the blue Busby darts and the elite darts kind of do. These are the red Busby darts from the recent Thermal Hunter and Zenith review. So they're just red from Busby. Next up, lay monorail. I'm just gonna show you this thing loading. appropriate to use this. Now I'm going to try to fire some nerfy leak darts from it. Much easier to load because they're thinner darts. At least the heads aren't all goopy. Now I'm going to try to load in some of the red Busby darts from the uh, thermal review. Firing the Jaguar with the included blue Busby darts. Now firing elite darts. First, the tactical storm. Operating the blaster is what you would expect. I didn't have many jams or malfunctions. As I mentioned, the jams that I did have occurred based on the gluey darts and kind of the crappy darts. I didn't have any jams or irregular malfunctions when I was using quality darts or like elite darts or anything that wasn't like uh, crap. I put the tactical storm up on my chronograph and I got an average of 82 feet per second with the included air warriors darts. And for a more fair comparison to other blasters, I also used nerf elite darts for an average of 81 feet per second on the chronograph. And again, around about the par right now is about 70 feet per second. So this is shooting hot, it's shooting hard, and that's awesome. Now to the monorail blaster, I'm interested in the mechanics of this blaster and using it is just fascinating for me because I like to know how things work and I like to see cool things work. But as far as like the functional aspects of the blaster, it's a very large blaster to hold five or six darts, like five plus one. And I had a number of jams, but when I used the Precise Pro darts or Nerf Elite darts, it fed fine most of the time, but I was still encountering enough jams that it would put me off of using this blaster in a Nerf battle. But I put the monorail up on my chronograph and I got an average of 70 feet per second with the included Air Warriors darts and also 70 feet per second with Nerf Elite darts. So shooting softer than the Tactical Storm, but the monorail blaster is firing about on par with what you should expect from most Nerf blasters on the market right now. And lastly, the Jaguar. This blaster worked fine. I didn't have any malfunctions with the, the clip. Pretty simple blaster. It met my expectations, but I didn't really have high expectations. I was too distracted by the monorail's awesome mechanics and the Tactical Storm's tactics because tactics. But I put the Jaguar up on my chronograph and I got an average of 73 feet per second with the Air Warriors darts. And with Nerf Elite darts, I got an average of 75 feet per second. So it's shooting on the hotter side, but not like really hot. Faster is generally better, but it's not like noticeably fast. The Tactical Storm does shoot noticeably harder than other blasters. This one just shoots a little bit harder. So conclusions on all of the blasters, starting out with the Tactical Storm. Overall, I like the Tactical Storm. It operated smoothly. It's compatible with Instrike magazines and Elite darts and also third party darts. So you can mix and match all the stuff. I like that you can remove the barrel if you just don't want the unnecessary barrel. If you want it because it looks cool, you can just keep it screwed on. The stock, I don't really understand because it's so small. Like why even make that removable? I don't get it. And it's too small to actually use and for it to be removable, it'd be nice if it were a functional stock and then you can remove it if you don't want it. Kind of a bummer that it doesn't have a tactical rail because when I looked at this in the box, I was kind of thinking, okay, the tactical storm could be like a sniper rifle. When you have this long of a barrel, that's kind of what our minds jump to. But without a tactical rail, like, what? And it has tactical in the name. 
I mean, I get that it's tactical that you could remove the barrel and remove, remove the stock, but tactical, that's kind of like hand in hand with tack rails and accessories and cool stuff like that. And the monorail has a rail, so I, I don't get it. Especially since the Thermal Hunter came out, I'd be cool to put that thermal scope on this blaster. That'd be super tactical. But overall opinion is positive. It shoots hard, it works smoothly, it does what it's supposed to do. That is the tactical storm. Next, the monorail blaster. Now this blaster I was really excited for after seeing it at the New York Toy Fair, and it's kind of let me down a little bit in the sense that it doesn't work perfectly. I used a prototype at the Toy Fair, and I was expecting it to be like a, an operational, functional, like final version now, but it still has some kinks. And just by the very nature of this design, it doesn't seem like it can ever work perfectly. It's relying on gravity for the feeding system as well as the chambering system. So that's just kind of an issue in itself. I cannot possibly be the only person that enjoys doing hardcore parkour while they're nerfing and flipping around because I got to go fast. But it only holds five rounds in the inline chamber here. So it's not like a super functional war practical blasters, but all the hype I've read about it and the fans stoke for this blaster, like uh, commenters and stuff, they're not really excited for the, the traditional reasons. It's it's a really cool loading system that I think this can be overhauled as a modder and you can get really excellent performance out of it and it's just a cool platform to build on instead of like a cool stock blaster. And in that sense it's great, it's very unique. I don't think I've seen anything else that loads just like this and it's really cool to just use. And I don't know how many shotguns there are like this. So if you're like a cosplayer or you want a particular appearance, if you paint this black, it'll look like a sawed off shotgun. So war practical, no. Super fun little plinker that's really interesting to use, absolutely. And that is the monorail blaster. And lastly, the Jaguar. Um, I don't really have a conclusion on this one. It's pretty cool, but it's not really anything that I would ever use. I would prefer a cylinder blaster because you don't have to deal with the alignment of the clip. You can't put that in a holster because of the weird shape of the clip, but I'm sure you didn't click on this video for the Jaguar. So yeah, that's kind of make you up your own decision. Final conclusion on the long distance darts. I don't like them. I don't understand why they're even a thing. I think the precise pro darts are the way to go as far as I can tell. I haven't done my full testing, so I'm gonna hate myself if these turn out to have some like major flaw, but I am pretty certain that the included long distance darts are just not worth using. But the compatibility with Nerf darts, you can use these blasters with those darts, which is great. So those are my opinions on the recent blasters by Air Warriors. I'd like to thank this video's sponsor, Target. Thanks very much, bros. If you're interested in purchasing any of these blasters, I'll have purchase links to target.com um, in the description box when they're available. These blasters are supposed to hit the shelves, I believe, in late July, so check it out then. And thank you very much to the Air Warriors PR team for sending out these blasters before they've even hit the shelves so I can get out a review before they're available. Is it inappropriate to just kind of go, first, woo! <laughs> I think I get 35 comments that say that in every one of my videos. Doesn't matter if it's true. I, I can say it louder than anybody. First! <laughs> Isn't that how the internet works? Truth? Logic? No, man. It's whoever screams the loudest and uses the most capital letters. <laughs> but that concludes my review of these blasters. Thanks so much for watching, bros. And as always, stay tactical.